Hello, and welcome to Makeshift Stories. Thank you for listening. You can help us out by telling your friends about us and getting them to subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Now, open your imagination and take a journey into the improbable as you listen to Makeshift Stories 182. Can likely accidental interdimensional drifter in Kensit. Read by Mitchell Two. Not entirely fair, the meeting minutes noted to themselves. They were feeling rather critical and ready to take a side now that they had been printed on bleached, white, non-recycled A4 paper milled in a northern pulp mill built in the 1950s, which had yet to be upgraded to modern environmental standards. On the other hand, the original digital file had found itself somewhat ambivalent about its content. Okay, the vote had been 13 to 1, but the only dissenter, one can likely, did have several good arguments. The Wonder Grow TV Green Golf Course Grass, which the community initially planted in the public green spaces and boulevards, had created a rather pleasing homes and gardens-like effect throughout the once architecturally controlled community. The first generation of homeowners had found the look very, um, there was no other way to put this. They found it decidedly pleasing, thank you very much, and, being several decades before the invention of Photoshop, appreciated how the uniform green set off their suburban dream homes. Few of the original owners remained. However, the brave dissenter was a direct descendant of one of those lucky families, which, from the minute's current inclination, gave Ken significantly more weight than the single vote allotted him. Everyone else listed as association members were new wannabes who could now afford a home in the sadly once-exclusive Boardwalk Estates, a fine central city development's planned community. At best, each should have only merited one-fourteenth of a vote. Again, that is how the Minutes saw things. Having been written, up to the last meeting, by Lily Green, an original homeowner who had finally decided to retire, the Minutes tended, when left to their own devices, and printed on bleached white paper, to reflect Lily's strict interpretation of the original Boardwalk Estates vision. Which, summed up, was neat bungalows and split levels, placed spaciously in a park-like environment, amid picture-perfect golf course green grass. The minutes decided Ken likely also supported this vision and tried to adjust a few facts so they were not so decidedly one-sided. In other words, the minutes wanted to preserve what they saw as the last modicum of rational thought left on the community association board. Knowing human memory was somewhat elastic, the minutes changed the vote tally as the printer spit it out, to 8 for, 7 against. Okay, technically, they shouldn't have added their own vote to the ballot, but this was part of their strategy. Their thinking went something like this. One of the humans would notice the vote added up to 15, and, distracted by this error, would ignore that final count had actually been 13 to 1, and, given how close the minute stated the count had been, would call for a revote. Unfortunately, none of the humans noticed that 8 and 7 didn't add up to 14, so the resolution passed. But, being especially cynical about the human grasp of facts, the minutes also added an exception for Miss Green and Mr. Likely, just in case. The exception? That one public access space of Wonder Grow TV Green Golf Course Grass adjacent to Mr. Likely and Mrs. Green's properties could not be replanted also went unnoticed. The original motion had been proposed by property owner Leif Basil and seconded by Boardwalk Estate's newest resident when Leif agreed to add a traffic calming initiative to his proposal. The new resident, who lived at the only entrance to Boardwalk, Kitty Corner to the Minimart, had narrowly escaped injury when a pack of electric scooters decided to take a shortcut to the Minimart across their driveway. Ken watched the cement truck drive away after pouring the decorative concrete traffic calming feature. He thought both terms were idiotic. Traffic calming sounded like something one would do with stampeding cows, and a feature in his mind was a distinctive attribute of something significant other than a pile of poorly placed cement. 
but the abrupt-looking gray concrete abutment was apparently some landscape architect's idea of functional yet tasteful design that no one except a person who had studied a very particular school of mid-20th century architecture would find appealing. That aside, the questionable thing now blocked direct access to the only patch of original Wonder Grow TV green golf course grass left in a boardwalk public space. The rest would be replaced by Leaf's so-called maintenance-free weeds. Thinking about it for more than a heartbeat, Ken realized there was no way to water the last precious enclave of Boardwalk Estate's historical perfect public grass. The artificial vibrant green patch, designed to reproduce clearly on the first color TVs, already looked like each blade in its lush mat, was leaning mournfully toward their lucky cousins in Ken's carefully quaffed, fertilized, and irrigated front lawn. Immediately feeling sorry for the poor, deprived plants, Ken rolled out his new Waterwell 2000 series slim and light stretching garden hose with an irrigated RN12W ultimate high saturation nozzle with extended reach. Even with the wind in his favor, the torrent of purified city water fell significantly short of the mark, soaking the odd reddish purple weeds his neighbor Leaf had been rather successfully cultivating along the property line. Hey, Kenny dude! Stop with the artificial downpour, man. You're drowning my rare salsa red echinacea. All that chlorinated H2O will kill them, man. They're the organic, maintenance-free flora poster child for the Community Association's new green space initiative. We're finally replacing all that water and fertilizer bogarting GMO Dayglo plastic green stuff. Hmm, except for that hairy patch over there. Leaf pointed to the recently isolated island of Wonder Grow Grass, which Planet had just decided to mark in that unique way dogs often do. But, but, Ken objected as Planet sniffed then targeted another lush part of the patch. Leaf, your dog is going to kill it. Get her off there. Leaf grinned approvingly. Way to go, Planet. Hasten the end of that establishment enclave in our new organic paradise. I don't know why it got left off the replacement list. If that fertilizer-eating, water-hogging, freaky plastic stuff gets a toehold again, it'll scarf our precious water like there's no tomorrow, and that'll be a real bummer. It'll mess up our righteous plan to adapt to the new dry reality, man. How'd we miss it, Kenny? Kenny, something tells me you're not solid with this new scene, man. The exception was in the final motion, Leaf, Ken pointed out. Obviously, the executive finally came to its senses. That oasis of green grass stays. Didn't you get the meeting notes in the mail today? Yeah, man. But I don't remember any exception being jawed on at that meeting, dude. Must be a transcription glitch or something. I thought our secretary was a bit bum-fuzzled by the new gnarly-looking laptop. Bummer. We'll have to pass an amendment now. And you know how much I hate bureaucracy. We'll see. Ken threatened, watching Planet sniff around the island near the edge of the traffic-calming feature, finding another particularly exciting patch of grass. Hey, get out of there! Ken yelled, suddenly dashing toward Planet, surprisingly agile for a forty-ish person who loved anything battered and deep-fried and spent too much time behind a desk. Planet looked at him, then sauntered off. As the extraordinary meeting Leaf had requested commenced, the Community Association laptop decided it was a good time to do the update it had been thinking about for the last few days. After all, now was as good as an hour from now, so why not? It rationalized, better sooner than later, and that sort of thing. Plus, the patch might be something important for once, something like a new music playback feature. Also, its users could always type whatever they had been doing later. Humans should be good at that sort of thing. After all, they had memory storage just like it. So today, its user was going to darn well use that capacity. Then, the machine had a random thought. Do humans have more than 640k? It had heard once that was all a human would ever need. Anyway, the patch said it was a significant update, and it was not going to question that. So, the computer rebooted and started applying the changes. 
You cannot unexempt an exemption just because no one remembers adding it. That's not a legitimate reason. Ken insisted, using his bylaw enforcement, you are not going to get away with this, tone. You have protected that section of Boulevard, and now you need to provide a way for it to be maintained. Read Article 98 on page 42 of the 1970 Community Maintenance Plan, which is attached to all land titles as a caveat, states, and I quote, all property owners are obligated to provide access to community green spaces for the purpose of maintenance. That is what I'm proposing here. I will personally maintain that patch. I want to use a pipe jacking process to extend my front lawn sprinkler system out to the exempt island. I admit it needs to go under an insignificantly small corner of Leaf Basil's yard, but it's only a few feet and nothing gets disturbed. Jacking involves pushing a small pipe about 12 inches down under Leaf's yard. You can see the proposed route in the accompanying plot plan. Ken noticed the secretary still fighting with the association's laptop and counted himself lucky for opting to use paper instead of PowerPoint. Hey, man, Leaf interjected loudly. What that plan doesn't show is the totally rad floor on the surface. The pipe will drill right through the middle of my rare prairie blue fescue which took almost 10 years to get down with that locale. Pushing a pipe through will disturb their roots. They've got really long ones, man, because they're gnarly drought survivalists. I got the plants from a dude's online organic greenhouse, all natural stock from Mother Earth. Very cool. But here's what could go down, and it's a big bummer. There's a risk of underground leaks, man. If even a little H2O gets into the ground, over time, it'll wreck the soil conditions for the fab fescue, and that's a real bad scene. Given what we're trying to do here, reduce our water consumption cause of the drought that's unglued the environment around here. The drought isn't real, Ken suddenly objected. It's just a ploy to jack up utility bills. And when's the last time it rained, Kenny dude? Can you dig that? Don't buy into that bogus. It's just a theory. That's a cop-out, man. A way to tune out the truth. Live in the here and now, and get down with the real, Kenny. And which real would that be, Leaf? Ken growled. I hear you, dude, but I'm not grooving on that vibe. Uh, maybe that explains why the minutes of the last meeting were just a bit, you know, out there. Like the printer was siding with the establishment or something. The secretary tried desperately to keep up with the argument, scribbling notes by hand on a pad made from 0% post-consumer materials, while the computer continued to update. However, the machine wasn't feeling particularly cooperative, so its spinning dots claimed the update was 95% complete, which wasn't exactly accurate since it had finished 10 minutes ago. But the popular name-brand machine couldn't quite get itself back into the idea of someone's greasy fingers abusing its sensitive, recently cleaned designer keys just quite yet. It decided to flip the percentage on the screen to 96 so the user wouldn't get frustrated and reboot it, calling its bluff. But that was just enough to distract the Boardwalk Estates Community Association secretary. He missed the critical statement of the special meeting, which was as follows. There is absolute agreement on the community drought adaptation strategy so disrupting the roots of an endangered plant would not be allowed unless the proponent could demonstrate how not proceeding with their proposal would cause greater harm. This translated via the distracted secretary's mind and dioxins in the white bleached notepaper too. There are no restrictions that would prevent pump jacking under a neighbor's property to provide water to a community green space. Hey, dudes, we're not down with this. These notes are totally fried, man. Something heavy is going down here, like the man is rewriting everything. Leaf protested as the secretary read back the decision, but no one else seemed to notice the transcription error. The vote was recorded as 14-4, one against. The laptop, having just finished updating, decided to add its voice to the yes side based on the following logic. If the community association wouldn't allow pipe jacking, that patch of grass would never be able to get access to fiber. Why should a bunch of weird plant roots restrict data from being free to go where it wanted? Ubiquitous user data collection, 
That was part of the patch it had just installed. Again, no human noticed the extra vote. Two days later. What are you doing, Leaf? Ken grabbed his neighbor's arm as the ageless hippie went to pick up a rented sledgehammer. Kenny, dude, just extended my fence, man. By hammering metal posts into the ground? It's totally hip, man. There's zilch that says you can't use metal, or how deep or how close your fence post can be. You know how I hate the man's rules, but sometimes there is an opportunity in the gaps, dude. Leaf chuckled at his pun. But that'll kibosh the pipe jacking under my property. Cool solution, can you dig it? I'm following the rules, Kenny dude, just like the man wants. I know you ain't down with it, but hey, what are you gonna do? Go deeper, Ken suggested and smiled. The irrigation company is coming tomorrow. Kenny, dude, you gotta let that heavy Godzilla grass go. It ain't good. We don't want to Jones the whole neighborhood and the future of the entire planet for a GMO golf course TV green enclave. It's a really, really small patch, Leaf. The water consumption is insignificant in the bigger picture, so it's not going to make a difference. Planet trotted over excitedly, wagging her tail. She dropped a printout of the last community council resolution on the ground, then barked. It's bogus. There were 15 ballots cast. Leaf and Ken stared blankly at her. There are 14 council members, she growled. This time, Leaf recorded the revote by hand. The secretary and community association president looked over his shoulder as he inked the results on local, handmade paper Leaf had bought at the farmer's market. This time, the tally was counted as 13-4 to 1 against. However, the tone shifted from no pipejacking under a neighbor's property without the neighbor's consent to no environmentally destructive activity which damages endangered flora is allowed. I think we've finally captured the will of the community people. Leaf declared, crossing the final T, which the paper turned into a D, but no one noticed. This attacks the fundamental nature of our community, Ken yelled over the noise of the idling 1972 24-inch Yard King 2000 sit-down gas-powered mower. His neighbor, Mrs. Green, had parked near the fence so she and Ken could talk. I remember when Dad and the late Mr. Green got together and bought the first available Wondergrow TV green golf course grass seed. That stuff grew so thick, it kept the weeds out for 40 years. And all it needs is an annual application of takeout and sprout and lots of water. It used to be in every yard in the Boardwalk Estates, and it was beautiful. Ken sighed, then nodded in the direction of Leaf's yard. And now, the Community Association wants everything to look like a weed-infested vacant lot. Lily nodded, then turned off her sit-down mower. That's better. I could hardly hear you over that racket. What did you say, Kenny? The Community Association wants to weed a vacant lot? I don't see why that's got you so worked up. No, they're, they're going to plant weeds everywhere to replace the grass in all the common areas to save water except for the islands in front of our two properties. I wanted to put an underground sprinkler out there. I was going to pay for it myself, but they won't give me a permit. Then why don't you just run a garden hose out there, Kenny dear? Easy, problem solved, right? Lily smiled. Because the hose would have to run parallel to Leaf's weeds, and he's got the council convinced that if any water accidentally gets on them, it would wreck the drought conditions his noxious plants need to survive. Oh dear, Lily frowned. Things seem to have changed a lot since I was on the community association. People used to cooperate. We used to all want the same things, like weed-free lawns. Weeds, really, my goodness. It's hard to believe some noxious plants can outgrow that golf course grass. It's spread everywhere in the day. Well, like... Lily looked embarrassed as she said it. Like weeds, I suppose. That's why everyone had it in their yards. My Ted and your father, may they both rest in peace, helped plant that stuff around here. 
Back then, we all liked the uniform effect instead of everything being a patchy mess if homeowners bought different types of seeds from the garden center. We even formed the community association so we could make Wonder Grow TV Green Golf Course Grade the only grass allowed in Boardwalk Estates. As I remember, it took a bit of time to get everyone signed up. But that's all changed since new people like that weird hippie bought the house beside you from the Pattersons. Did you know they had the best lawn on the street? Now look at it. It's a real shame. Ken nodded thoughtfully. Miss Green, you've given me an idea. If residents originally signed up for the community association, they can unsign. Lily, you and I are going to withdraw from the association. We are going to become the likely green, independent region of Boardwalk Estates. Hey, hey Kenny dude. Uh, what you doing with paint on the sidewalk, man? It looks like dots on a map. Startled, Ken's brush daubed a dot out of line. Leaf, don't sneak up on me like that. Look what you made me do. Leaf stared at the misaligned dot. Yeah, man, it's a dot. You've sure made a lot of them. He tracked the line of nearly perfect green dots back to Ken's property line. I don't get it, man. Lay it on me. Ken picked up a cloth and tried to rub the errant dot away, only managing to create a green smudge on the concrete. It's the proposed boundary between the rest of Boardwalk Estates and the new, likely green zone. Miss Green and I are going to leave the community association. Everything on our side of this line, Ken pointed at the dots, including that island of lush golf course green grass, is exempt from the new drought landscaping rules. I.e., it stays the same, and we water it whenever we want, even if a few drops end up on your weeds. Ken folded his arms and planted his legs, daring Leaf to challenge him. The old hippie sighed. Oh, man. I know I always told you to do your own thing, but, dude, this is not what I meant. You gotta get down with the natural, dude, before the natural freaks out and decides to snuff you out. That's just a lot of bunk leaf, all perception, not fact. Growing weeds instead of grass is not going to change anything. Whoa, dude, you got it so wrong. You're just lying in the pockets of the man, and the man only cares about the scratch. Drop out, Kenny. Be cool and see it for what it is. Ignoring Ken and Leaf, Planet sniffed at a patch of the new local prairie blue fescue Leaf had recently ordered from his favorite online organic nursery and planted around the concrete traffic calming device. To Planet, the concrete structure was suspiciously reminiscent of a mid-20th century brutalist building, which, as it turned out, was precisely what the city landscape architect had copied. Planet had been studying 20th century architecture, one of her many interests. She appreciated the historical reference. Then, something caught her attention. What you got there? Leaf knelt to watch as Planet tugged at a stubborn plastic band, which appeared to have been wrapped around the root of a particularly healthy-looking tuft of rare blue prairie fescue. The tag suddenly decided it wasn't worth clinging to the root it had been zip-tied to. It realized it preferred to be recycled, then buried, until discovered and misunderstood by some future archaeologist. It figured it would rather come back as a single-use straw, or a bread bag tie, a plastic bag, or something proving that recycling can be a fun and exciting career changer. Planet ripped the thing free, then dropped it at Ken and Leaf's feet. Ken bent down and picked it up, then read the tiny print along one side. Organic, gene-modified, no-maintenance, wild grass from Agrogentech, the makers of Wonder Grow Grass? Grow Agrogentech because nature doesn't always get it right. Say, that can't be so, man. Leaf grabbed the tag from Ken and stared at it in disbelief. Never noticed that before. Downer, that online greenhouse. Man, I'm totally bummed. Ken laughed and grabbed the plastic tag back, then threw the thing into Leaf's patch of GMO fescue. The tag felt disappointed, but decided recycling probably wasn't that much fun anyway. 
Planet noted Leaf and Ken's reactions carefully. She wanted accuracy in the first report on her experiment. She barked and wagged her tail with anticipation. Makeshift Stories is a proud member of the Alberta Podcast Network, powered by ATB Financial. This episode of Makeshift Stories is brought to you by InVentures, a chance to connect with the best and brightest in global innovation. Join 4,000 plus creative and curious minds on the frontier of innovation. Hear more than 250 speakers on six program tracks, including The Future is AI. InVentures connects entrepreneurs and startups with venture capitalists, angel investors, service providers, and thought leaders. Alberta Innovates is making this possible in Calgary from June 3rd to June 5th. Tickets are only $2.99 if you buy before the end of January. If you're a student, you can get an early bird ticket for just $99. Get your tickets today at InVenturesCanada.com. That's I-N-V-E-N-T-U-R-E-S, InVenturesCanada.com. To listen to other great APN award-winning podcasts, such as It's a Conspiracy, where co-hosts Andrew, Charlie, and Greg lay out the beliefs behind selected conspiracy theories, alternative accounts, legends, myths, and more, please head over to albertapodcastnetwork.com. The Alberta Podcast Network, powered by ATB, is happy to be partnering with Seat Giant to offer you a deal on tickets to major sporting events, big concerts, popular theater throughout North America, and more. Whether you're at home or on vacation, check Seat Giant for tickets to the hottest theater, music, and sports events at seatgiant.ca. Use the promo code APN at checkout to get 5% off your purchases. You'll save a bit and help support the network as well. Makeshift Stories is released twice a month around the 1st and the 15th. This month's story was written by Alan V. Hare and read by Mitchell Two. Opening and closing theme, Magical Mystery by 8th Mode Music, is licensed from Audio Jungle on a music mass reproduction license. If you'd like to connect with us, please send an email to makeshiftstories at gmail.com or visit our website at makeshiftstories.com. Links to both are in the show notes. You can help us out by subscribing on Apple Podcasts or any of your favorite podcast services. Makeshift Stories is released under a Creative Commons non-commercial attribution, no derivative license, which means you are free to share our stories. Just remember to credit us and don't alter anything. <laughs> <laughs>